shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Guru. Thank you for watching. So in one of my previous videos, I'll try to link it up here. Um, I talked about how I'm going to do a kind of my initial thoughts on the X curve. Now, anyone who's a regular subscriber and or viewer of my channel knows that I've had a Shapeoko 2 slash X curve for quite some time now. So I, I bought original Shapeoko probably about three years ago and then have been upgrading it along the way, ultimately upgraded to what it would now be considered an X-Carve. Well, there's a couple, you know, little things about the, the Shapeoko upgrade into an X-Carve that doesn't quite make it an X-Carve. Uh, so I decided last fall to go ahead and I think it's time to upgrade. I wanted more surfacing material. So I bought an X-Carve and you can see it right there. <laughs> there you go. And so I upgraded from the 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter Shapeoko slash X-Carve to the 1000 millimeter by 1000 millimeter, which is a dramatic increase in space. And I just wanted to kind of, um, you know, it, it's not a review. I'm not going to call this a review. What I'm going to say is I'm going to walk through what I like about it, what I don't like about it, the kind of pros and cons. Um, and compare it to what I'm used to, which is the Shapeoko slash X-Carve uh, -carve on the side there. So let me grab the uh, kind of mobile camera here and we'll go over to the actual machine, walk you through it real quick and kind of point some things out and then uh, we'll kind of come back here and, and wrap it up. So okay, I'll apologize for the quality of this audio, but it is coming from the GoPro, so uh, we'll have to deal with that. This is a, a picture of the, or I should say a video of the X-Carve itself, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the different components. Down here in the bottom, I actually have my dust collection. Uh, you can see the hose isn't connected, and I'll get to that uh, in the video. But I have a little shop vac. It's a two and a half gallon shop vac, but it's uh, 5.5 horsepower, which ha provides quite a lot of uh, suction power to pull the chips off the board. A little power strip here, and the X controller is what actually controls the machine. You can see the nice e-stop. Uh, an emergency stop button here and some pause play or pause and continue and stop buttons and the USB connection here. On the back this is a major upgrade from the compared to the previous version or the first version of the uh, Shapeoko. These connections here are really nice. Uh, you can pop them off and then move the box around and then the, the little uh, I think they're called ferrules here connected to the wires. This reduces the strain so that's that's quite nice as well. And then you can see here the drag chain, all the wires go into the drag chain, makes it a, a lot nice and bundle the wires here together. And then the waste board here, it's got this nice silk screen on here, which is very accurate actually in terms of the sizing. I did put a waste board down on top of the waste board <laughs> so that I don't destroy this uh, nice screen printed waste board here. And you can see the I have the, um, the holes here for the, the clamping system. I purchased the clamping system with this as well. The Z-Probe here, which we'll talk about in the video later as well. And then the uh, DeWalt router. Right here I, ch I switched from the um, Akita to the DeWalt. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then uh, that's pretty much uh, the overview. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you like that overview of the machine itself. And now I'm kind of walk you through the pros and cons of the machine, which is really code for what I like about the machine and what I don't like about the machine. And the good news is, is there's more that I like about it than I don't like about it. So let's kind of just get after it real quick. So uh, number one, the build process. The original Shapeoko build was very lengthy and problematic. It took... Um, almost uh, what I would say 16 hours of build time. So it was spread across two, two and a half, three days to build the Shapeoko. There were a lot of parts. It was challenging to build. It was my first build in all fairness. So I kind of knew what I was getting into with the X-Carve. So maybe that helped me a little bit. Uh, the one thing I will say is the Shapeoko 2 had a bunch of videos associated with it that really helped me understand the build process rather than just a bunch of web pages. So I got to put uh, the Shapeoko 2 uh, build uh, instructions in the plus column for them. The X Carves instructions were a little sketchy, and I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, the number, uh, the other thing I just want to mention is, is part of the build. It's a little nuance of the way the the X Carve works. Is it's got these uh, rollers that go along the the rails, 
And the way you tension the rollers and make sure they're tight is through an eccentric nut or eccentric spacer. The X carve uses eccentric spacers and the Shapeoko used um, or uses, I guess, because I still have it. Uh, eccentric nuts. Now why is that important? Well with the spacer you can actually adjust the tension, uh, the distance of the rollers from the rail separately from the tightness of the nut itself. And so that's a big deal because in the shape Oko that I have, uh, the, the nuts come loose frequently and so that causes the wheels to get super loose and causes all sorts of bad things to happen while you're cutting. And so the upgrade to the spacers is a big deal, but coupled with that, with the X-Carve, is all, most of the nuts, uh, not all of them, but a good portion of the nuts are actually uh, nylon reinforced nuts that are uh, self-tightening, if you will. Uh, so you don't have to use Loctite and, and what you had to use with the Shape Oko to keep the nuts in place. So the, the nuts themselves are much less likely to move and the eccentric spacers can be adjusted independent from the tightness of the nuts. Makes a big difference in how you can manipulate the machine, how you can tune the machine, and how the machine stays in tune, which is super important. Uh, so you don't have to futz with it every time you want to use it, right? Um, it, it, it makes a big deal just from an operational perspective. That's a very practical, pragmatic sort of um, plus column, I would say. And it's actually something if you read the forums and you dig into the forums, it's one of the complaints of the original machine. Uh, the next thing I just want to mention, uh, the drag chain. Uh, for me, I did not get a drag chain for the Shape Oko 2. I regretted it. I have it with the X-Carve. It makes a big difference just keeping the wires out of the way. So if you don't want to spend the extra money for, for different things, I, I would say get the drag chain. It's it seems like a small little thing, but uh, you, you'll regret it if you don't get it. I'm just saying. Uh, next thing is, again, like just like the drag chain, the waste board. I did not, I, I got the waste board with the Shape Oko 2. I did not choose to get the prefabricated printed one with the inserts that you can, you know, screw the things in the uh, clamping system in. Uh, that was a mistake. I got it with this X-Carve. Having the waste board with the inserts that you can screw into is uh, makes a big difference. And the reason I say that is I used to use double-sided tape for all my projects. It worked very well. It holds it down. That's not a problem. But I learned kind of through trial and error over the period of a, quite a number of long, long number of months is that the, the double-sided tape isn't quite the same thickness necessarily and uh, when you push it down, it doesn't necessarily stick evenly. So if you're doing something that requires an incredibly fine Z height uh, or Z depth, uh, the double-sided tape doesn't quite really work out. Now, clamping it directly to the spoil board, which is what I started to do with my Shape Oko 2, creates a much better flat surface to mill on. And so I would just say, go ahead, get the waste board, get the clamping system. You don't have to buy their clamping system. You can kind of roll your own. You can actually, there's designs out there to cut one with the Shape Oko um, or the X-Carve. So, uh, but get, use a clamping system and do it that way if you can. If you need, if you know, if you can't have something clamped down from the sides or the top, um, there's other ways to, to do that. But you can use, you know, the tape um, if you need to for one reason or another, but uh, I, I think that should be the exception, not the rule like it was uh, for my Shape Oko 2. Uh, next thing I'll mention is what is known as the X controller or the electronics that control the machine itself. Uh, in the original Shape Oko 2, you had an Arduino with a motion control board you put on top and then you had to, you know, put all the wires into the little um, holes and screw them down and it, it wasn't well labeled. You kind of sort of had to know what you're doing. Uh, the two um, uh, Y motors were wired together and it was easy to get them backwards. So it, it was hard to get right the first time. Relatively easy fix, but it very uh, that just added to the amount of time it took to do the assembly, right? Dramatically, I might add. Uh, and it's it's something that not everyone's comfortable with. Uh, so, you know, anyone who is comfortable building things with nuts and bolts might not be comfortable with soldering irons and in, 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 in sensitive electronics. So the X Carve controller or the X controller makes that a uh, dramatically different uh, sort of approach. You have a nice aluminum enclosure. You can see it there. 
right there. Um, you put you put the electronics in. You still have to assemble the electronics, so it's a little sensitive there. But you don't have to solder anything anymore. Uh, the connectors on the back I showed them in the previous video make it really easy uh, to push things in and get them in the right place. And it's just it's it's a nicer thing. But more importantly, though, the X controller hardware is just better than the original Shapeoko. Um, you have two independent controllers for the Z axis. Um, you have higher current, higher power output. You don't have to futz with the pots to really adjust it, or at least I didn't. Um, the e-stop button on the top, I <laughs> swear to God, I plugged the machine in, I did one operation and I had to e-stop it. Um, so it, it, <laughs> I, I, I intended to install an e-stop on my Shapeoko. I never did it. I, re I do regret that decision, but the, the e-stop is something that is <laughs> you will need at some point because we're humans and we make mistakes. Uh, the three buttons on the front, the pause, the stop, or run, whatever, I, I haven't used those. Uh, I use the the, the um, uh, universal G-code sender and those buttons on the software work just fine. So, But they're there to use and that's important. Uh, the last thing I will mention is what I will characterize as the most life-changing event for me relative to CNC. And it seems ridiculous and it's a small thing and it's something that I uh, have on my to-do list for the shape Oco, but it is the Z probe. Uh, you know, using the Z probe to set the Z height and not man manually jogging the machine down and using a piece of paper and sliding it back and forth to adjust the Z height is a big freaking deal. It just makes the whole process of setting up the machine and getting it ready to do some milling a lot easier. Now, one caveat on that, the Z probe on the shape Oco um, is an, an add-on. You have to buy a third party. The Inventables did not offer it. Z-Probe on the X-Carve is a standard, uh, I guess, uplift you want. It, it, you can just buy it as an extra thing. It's not very expensive. It's only like $30, right? Um, but what, what I will say is you, you still have to make sure your machine is tuned and flat and level for the Z-Probe to work properly, right? If your your bed is not flat and you, you, know, you probe on one side and you're milling to the other side, the Z-Probe isn't gonna give you a whole lot of benefit. So I did spend a fair amount of time tuning my machine before I started using it. Again, that's because I had the previous machine, I understood what was required, um, and I made those adjustments, both in the, in the level and the tramming of it, um, and making sure that the, the, the Y-axis, the gantry was you know square uh, you know this way and that way. Um, it's important. So uh, follow the instructions to the end and then go to the wiki um, and my recommendation is go to the wiki and make those uh, tweaks on how to tune your machine before you start using it and you'll have much better results. So what don't I like about the X-Carve? Well, the good news is, as I mentioned, the list is very short. The first thing that I don't like about it is something that will change in time and I'll explain that in a minute. So I don't like the dust collection. Uh, why don't I like the dust collection? Because there isn't any. <laughs> Uh, I purchased the intentionally purchased the dust collection, the new dust collection capability from them, and I've now had the machine for a month, uh, six weeks, uh, put together, ready to go. I've been waiting to use it a lot for the dust collection, and it's still not here. So it took four, three and a half weeks to get all the different parts shipped to me. Um, I waited two weeks to put it together. Um, and here we are, so let's do the math. There was three weeks to get it, five weeks, so, and it's six weeks later, so 11 weeks-ish, I still don't have the dust collection. That's not necessarily Inventable's fault. Uh, they did outsource the dust collection to a third party, apparently, um, or some portions of it, uh, and they had some ordering challenges because of the volume orders they received because of the discount, and then they received a bunch of parts. I just got an email today, actually, saying, hey, received a bunch of parts. They weren't in spec, so we had to uh, start over or whatever they're going to do. Uh, so I have, uh, I don't know if you can see it, uh, let me do this here. Uh, it's so hard because it's backwards. Um, you can see I 3D printed or I had uh, this dust collection thing 3D printed um, for my Shape Oco. And again, it was a, it, like the Z probe, it was a life changing moment for me. I didn't have to stand there and hold the, the shop back. I would just let it run. I would, you got to watch it. You got to pay attention to it. You can't just let it run free form like a 3D printer, or let it run overnight for 12 hours. <laughs> That's not what I recommend for a CNC machine. But uh, for the X-Carve, again, I've, I've done a couple cuts, um, you know, six, seven, eight cuts or so now on it. And, uh, well, times four, because there's four cuts, 
for the project. So a lot of cuts. The, the point is, is I was really tired of holding the um, the shop vac and the hose and whatnot. Uh, now, uh, for the smaller bits, the amount of dust created, not a big deal. You can usually let it build up. For the bigger bits, the quarter inch bits, they, they just throw stuff everywhere and it can get in the gears and gum things up and jam up your machine and cause some issues. So um, I spent probably more time describing the fact that I don't like the dust collection system because I haven't received it yet more than the machine itself, but you get, kind of get the point. Uh, the, uh, you know, this is going to sound ridiculous. Um, one of the things I don't like about the machine is the size. <laughs> um, it, how ridiculous does that sound? Uh, you know, I upgraded from 500 by 500 to 1,000 by 1,000, and one of the things I'm bitching about is how big the machine is, right? So he here's what I'm, I, I don't like about it is the machine is big and bulky. It takes up a lot of space. It was difficult to manipulate while I was building it. Um, the now that it's in place, it's sitting there, um, and the cut surface is beautiful. It's glorious, right? Um, but it still takes up almost four feet by four feet in my office, which is 10 feet by 11 feet. You do the math there. That is a tremendous amount of square footage. Um, so may, you know, I, I, maybe I can do something about by doing a drop desk or you know something like this, I don't know. But uh, so it's just, uh, I, I wanted the bigger machine. I got the bigger machine. It's now, it's just when I'm not using it, it's just in the way. <laughs> so, uh, you know, look, I'll suck that up. I'll take the hit. It's fine. It's not Inventable's fault. It's not Xcar's fault. It's just, uh, it is what it is. So um, now on to something that I think Inventables can control: uh, the build instructions. Uh, there were uh, I got about halfway through the build instructions. I was actually really impressed with the instructions. They were they were spot on. Um, told me everything I needed to know. I, again, I had built the Xcar so or the uh, previous Shapeoko, so I was comfortable with what I was doing. So I I didn't read every line and nuance so i kind of got the sense of what i needed and i went off and did it but i got about halfway through and the instructions weren't adding up and i did a couple things that i had to uh, back out and do again because i got it wrong because there was nothing in the instructions that says hey wait a minute make sure it looks like this or make sure it looks like that um the the y gantry sides there i took off and put on and i am not exaggerating at all six times um, I took them off, I flipped them around, I thought I got it right, uh, I got it right, but then they were backwards, so I had to take them off and reverse them, um, I put them back on, and it turns out then they were flipped, and I had to, you get the picture. Uh, the, more importantly though, getting to the end of the instructions, it, it was almost like whoever was writing them got tired near the end, and they just stopped documenting really important things, right? Um, so like putting the, the spoil board down, they tell you to put the, the little lock nuts in, and, but they wouldn't tell you where to put them. Um, and that's kind of important. Um, so the electronics are in attaching the X-Carve um, box if you buy the extension, right? Well, the instructions are written as if you bought the extension. If you didn't buy the extension, there's a couple extra parts and, and put bolts in places that are not in the instructions. Now, again, because I've built one before, I kind of sort of winged it and I I guessed, um, but for someone who's never done it before, uh, you know, I bet they would be all over the internet, just googling it or whatever, and and so that's a real problem. Now I did, uh, I took notes, I took some pictures, so uh, the instructions are on GitHub. So I intention, I, my intentions are to go in and edit them and say, hey, um, I'm gonna fix them and say, hey, you need to put extra information here or whatever, whatever. So um, I only got burned uh, once, uh, twice. If you, the Y gantry was the worst, it <laughs> that was like an hour of my life trying to figure out what I got wrong. Um, and then the electronics, uh, there was a screw that I had to put in that I didn't put in. And so when I got to the very end, I slid everything together and it went all bonkers because I missed a screw. Um, that's a little problematic. So. And again, if you're not super, if you're not you know comfortable with electronics, that could have really not only put you off but maybe freak you out in some regard. So um, there's some work to do there. The last thing uh, that I don't like is something that I was not expecting, um, and it is the Dewalt router itself. Right? I, this is again not Inventables fault necessarily, um, but I gotta tell you, I don't like the Dewalt router. Uh, it, it's, it's louder than the Makita, which I can deal with. I always wear ear protection when I'm using it anyway. But what, what I don't like about it is the collet is really hard to use. And I don't understand this. And let me show you what I mean. So here is the wrench 
that they give you with a dual router. There's one. The way you use it is you push the little button, you spin the, the spindle until it locks in, and then you use this wrench. Um, the Makita has two wrenches. You, you can hold it from the top and the bottom, and then you just kind of squeeze them together or pull them apart to tighten or loosen it. Um, I like that that two wrench system because I don't have to futz with that button. The, the, the Makita had the button too and I use it occasionally, um, but it wasn't required with a DeWalt. And you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I doubt it, but maybe I'm doing something wrong. You need to use the button. That's annoying. But beyond the button, the, the call it, when you loosen it, when you finally, you put that torque on there and you pull it and you, you, you rip it free and you reach in there and you grab it, it does about a three quarters of a twist and then it tightens up again. And you have to use this thing again and the button again. And you got to turn this like three full revolutions until it loosens up enough where you can get the bit in. This thing and the button and the fact that it breaks free and then you got to put it on again is freaking annoying as hell. I just I cannot begin to express to you how annoying it is. With the Makita, once it broke free, you spun the little collet off. Uh, you know, you open it up and you slide the bit in, or you open, you know, take it off completely and you put a new co uh, collet in it. Um, that I don't know what's going on with the the mechanics of the nut on the on the router that cause it to be loose and then be tight again. I have to dig into it. Um, something that's different between the Makita and the and the Dewalt is the, the 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 insert for the collet is actually attached to the nut itself. That might have something to do with it or not. Um, again, something you can fix. You can choose to use the Makita instead of the DeWalt. Um, I uh, regretted when I got the Shape Oko that I didn't just choose the stock configuration. I kind of customized it to something I thought would be better. Um, but because I deviated from the what I'll characterize as the baseline, um, the support was um, a deviation. So I had to find that 10%, not the 90% to get support. So I did this as stock uh, because I wanted just mainline support and I just wanted everyone using the DeWalt, everyone liked I, no one's ever complained about the collet on the DeWalt, um, surprisingly enough, because it's <laughs> it's really annoying. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. It's just really annoying to me. Um, and so I, I'm not going to change it out. I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to deal with it. Um, well, I shouldn't say I'm not. Uh, unlikely that I will change it. I'm just going to suck it up and deal with it. But um, this uh, single wrench, um, and it, by the way, it says 17 here, which I'm assuming is 17 millimeters. I have a 17 millimeter wrench that doesn't fit on it, so I don't know what's going on there. But um, but other than that, the the router does have a good power. Um, it seems on par with the Makita. There's a couple situations where it bogged down where I didn't expect it to bog down. I've been using the same um, feeds and speeds that I use for the Makita that uh, worked fine, and there's a couple situations where the 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 wall didn't perform as well as I was expecting it, which is interesting. Um, and I did actually have it, um, I had the, the X carve control, the X controller, the, the route and the DeWalt router and the, um, shop vac all plugged into one outlet and it actually popped the circuit breaker, not the circuit breaker, the, the, the power strip, um, protection on it, um, which was interesting. It overheated and popped it. Never had that happen on the uh, the previous setup, but again, the, the the steppers were smaller, less current on the drivers, and the I think the Dewalt has a little bit more horsepower. I think it's one and a half instead of one and a quarter horsepower. I could be wrong on that, but anyway, so that's my kind of uh, pros and cons. Okay, so that's my, uh, I'm going to call it a little mini review of the X-Carve. Uh, it's not a, a, a complete review. I'm going to continue to work with it, and I'll probably uh, post my findings in uh, the upcoming weeks and or months. But um, that's what I like about it and what I don't like about it right now after uh, a few weeks of, of kicking the tires. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, as always, if you don't like it. Appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Uh, you know, with a new YouTube partnership program, uh, subscribing to me is going to become significantly more important than it was in the past. So please, uh, please, if you like the video, please subscribe. Uh, it's no skin off your nose, and it helps me out tremendously. And uh, ring the bell if you want to see new content. Thanks, everyone.